Hello. So <clears throat> rather often I get asked how to run OpenFlow from the source code. And on the GitHub page, there's a guide on how to do that. It's relatively simple, but sometimes it just helps seeing someone do it in a video. So here's a video of someone doing that. <laughs> so you don't need visual code to run OpenFlow, but the guide will assume that you are using visual code and will be using VS code specific things. We also need Node.js version 10 or higher. Um, I tested with version 10, 12 and 14. Um, I think I'm running 12 right now. Um, you need MongoDB and RabbitMQ installed locally. A default MongoDB will not be requesting username and password. So the configuration files are assuming that. Uh, a default installed RabbitMQ will allow local host to connect and log in using guest guest and the configuration files is also going to be assuming that. So if you did anything else differently, fix the configuration file accordingly. Um, or just do it like the guy tells you to. So the first thing we need is a copy of the source code. So if you are going to be making changes or if you are yeah, and making pull requests, helping with new features or fixing bugs or whatever. Um, you need to force the source code, of course, and make the changes there, and then you can do a pull request. But for demo purposes, I'm just going to be cloning the official um, repository. There we go. So. <clears throat> You don't need to install these in global, but I just like having these commands easily available without having to prefix with node modules and so on. So we're going to be installing Gulp, TypeScript, Browserify and TSFi as global packages. So yeah, <laughs> once that is done, by the way, I cheated all these were installed in, uh, beforehand, so it went a little bit easier. But once that is there, we can now install the packages that is part of OpenFlow. Not OpenFlow, no bread, but OpenFlow. So the source code is kind of split in two, where OpenFlow is in one folder and my version of hosting Node-RED is in another folder. So we also need to go to that folder and install the packages and pre requests. Um, so while doing this, Node-RED version 2 has just been released. I think it's released, or is it beta? I can't remember. Um, but I'm not using that and I haven't tested version 2. Um, but the good thing about that is that we don't have as many dependencies on old packages and get all these warnings. Um, but yeah, at the time of recording this, that's not really available. Um, so once we have that, we really have everything that we need in order to get things. Well, no, we don't. <laughs> um, so if you run this now, um, um, let me explain. So there's a launch file and the launch file will allow you to attach to a node red running somewhere on port 5858 or a node red running on 5859. This is super handy if you are running inside Docker or Kubernetes and want to troubleshoot something inside there. So what you do is you pretty much just go to some installation somewhere, you go to an deployment, you right click it and click port forward and now you can attach to that. But for now, let's focus on these two down here, which is for running OpenFlow and Node-RED locally. Um, there is a pre-launch task that will start a, a task that will be compiling all the TypeScript code and then watching for changes. So whenever you change something, that will automatically get updated. That is not enough, but that, that is half the story. So we just ran it. It's compiling and there was no errors, but when we run it, we get an error message telling that we don't have a secret. 
the reason for that is I want people to actually look inside this file and have an opinion about what is in here, but also open your eyes for different ways to configure and run OpenFlow. So what you have to do is create a folder called config. Inside that config file, we a folder, we create a .environment file. And that contains the C group. And now we won't get an error message anymore. You should, of course, change this to something else. Uh, create a 36 character long string, which that is random and has special characters and all of that. Um, but, but basically, this is what controls how OpenFlow would be acting on your local development machine. So with that, yeah, we can actually now run OpenFlow. And it's running, um, but it will not be working. So if I go to localhost, it, um, we would get an error message telling us that it can't find anything. And the reason for that is that um, this task is compiling to the distribution folder and it is then running what is in the distribution folder. And inside that, we have a public folder that contains the file that is the web application, which has not been copied. So if we create a new task and we run gulp watch, um, if I just type something random here, um, sometimes you'll get an error message if it's a blank machine or you haven't done this before. You'll get an error message telling you that you don't have permission to run unsigned PowerShell scripts. Uh, some NPM packages uh, have binaries that is based on PowerShell. If you do that, you need to open a PowerShell as administrator. And you need to allow running unsigned PowerShell scripts. Um, there are different options you can use, but if you are on a development machine, bypass is the lowest security level. Don't do this on a production machine, of course, but using bypass simply allows running anything. Um, so once you've done that, you are now allowed to run Gulp and other uh, things here. So what we can do is we can first compile our file sheets. Once those are compiled, we can then run a watch job uh, if you run Gulp without any uh, parameters, it will run the default job, which will also minify and compress the bundles of down sheets and JavaScript to make them even smaller. Well, small might be a big word in this context because it's not really that small, but it will make them smaller. But if you don't care about that in development mode, you can run Watch and it will not minify, so it's even faster. And now, if we go to our web page, you can see that we can now sign in. I was signed in already, but um, and we have access to everything, and we can do whatever we want inside here. Um, that also means that now we can go here and we can run OpenFlow. This also have a build task that will monitor for changes, and it should be running. It is. So now if we go to our browser and we type 1880, here is our Node-RED. And we can now play around with Node-RED and OpenFlow and you can debug and you can make changes or whatever you want. So um, good luck.